Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Encounter with God Together. I'm Gail Martin, president of Scripture Union USA, and each week I welcome a guest to go over the, the week ahead's readings in our daily Bible reading guide, Encounter with God. And this week I have the, uh, the wonderful honor to have with me Janet Morgan. Janet serves in the U.S. office as executive vice president. I have drug her out of retirement uh to uh to serve with us she was on the presidential search team and uh had retired as international director for scripture union so janet brings a wealth of experience and knowledge of the whole su global and uh it's great to have you here with me tonight janet wonderful to be here with you yeah so why don't you give our viewers a little glimpse of of what it might be like to look out over the 120 scripture union movements oh wow the world and yeah. uh what would they see you know as in 120 a they would see a lot of ministry to children and young people and uh, they would see a movement that shares the same aim uh but uh, expresses that aim in whatever country they're in in the appropriate way in that particular country uh, they would see a whole lot of schools ministry uh, they would see a lot of camping they would see a lot of summer and holiday uh, activities in Australia. They'd see chaplains in many of the schools there in Australia, uh, in uh, places uh, like uh, Kenya. Uh, they would see elementary schools running their uh, program that helps children get to know the Bible uh, from Genesis uh, to Revelation. In Singapore, they'd see a special program called Walking with Wounded Children, mm. children who uh, need emotional uh, support and help. Uh, so there's many different expressions of Scripture Union's aims uh, across the world. It's, 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 it's been a real privilege uh, to be able to serve worldwide. That's right. And you did, you did do a stint in Australia as director as well. I did. I did in Australia and also worked with, of course, England and Wales. And the exciting thing here in the SU USA, of course, is the development of It's Your Move, a uh, right. special program that churches can use to reach out uh, to the rising middle schoolers in their local community. And uh, so have a look at the Scriptine website to learn more about that. But it's been used with over a million uh, young people. Uh, in England and in other countries uh, as well. So well, thanks for it to Thanks for that shout out, Janet. I didn't even ask you to do that, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, uh, we do. Yeah, around the world, Bible engagement of all ages, family and youth is a key hallstone, hallmark, and um, we're trying to do that here too in this program as we we tee up the week's readings uh, for those in the community who are already reading our Bible guide and those who are yet discovering us. So mm. this week we're in Romans, uh, yeah. Romans 14 and 15. And I know you've got some, yes. some thoughts and reflections that God's laid on you. So yes, yes. I'm going to pray for you, Janet. Okay. That'd be okay. great. Thank all you. All right. Father, I do pray. And I thank you for all the wealth of experience that Janet brings to the team here in the U.S. and for uh, the way that she's seen you move through your spirit, through Bible engagement around the world. And I pray that you speak through her tonight and today as she shares uh, what you have put on her heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, well, we're in the last innings uh, in the uh, the book of Romans. Don't bring that up. The Phillies That's just right. lost in the very oh, last yeah. inning. <laughs> That's right. Any okay. Phillies fans out there? We'll we'll focus on the Romans then. And all right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry to detract. I don't yeah. want to cause any unpleasant. <laughs> Uh, but Paul continues his letter to the believers in, in Rome, and and we have to remember in this that. Rome is this, of course, the seat of the Roman Empire. They are occupiers in Jerusalem. And uh, they said at that time, it's a sprawling metropolis of more than a million people. Mm. And it was the first city of the empire and the largest and probably most splendid city in that time and in that day. And really, you can sum up these readings, and Paul does sum up. He sort of gives a summary of his message to these people uh, in verse 17, which, of course, was uh, on Saturday. 
But this is what he says. It's a message. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what he longed for these people in Rome, in this busy, busy, busy metropolis. He wanted righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And this three words stuck out to me too. They yes. really did, yeah. Yes, so. and he says this, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this, will you know that you, that will they know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's trying to show them what is the more important than, oh, well, should we eat meat or should we not? Or should we eat meat that's sacrificed to idols? So they were getting caught up in the minutia and he was saying, no, there's a better way here. He's trying to show them that there is uh, really the practical shape of a redeemed humanity, a new way of, of life. And uh, of course, in it, he addresses the issues of the day, which he says, those are secondary, don't fall into the trap of elevating the importance or falling into the trap of making people follow the letter of the law. Uh, this is a new dawning, it's a new day, it's a new kingdom. Um, so that special message is message of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm. And uh, then he goes on to talk about really what was his special calling. And he talks about the Gentiles' place in the kingdom of God. And he says this, the grace of God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. He gave me the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So again, showing them it's a new era. The Gentiles are mm -hmm. also a part of this and uh, a welcome part of it and and uh, also an equal part of it. Uh, and he goes on to say, I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed and moreover, that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. So it's both and, he said, mm -hmm. it's the Jews and the Gentiles, this same promise that was given to the Jews also includes the nations, as we will hear later, is what it is called, the Gentiles as well. So they have an equal part. And then he takes it even further. It's not just for now. It's not just a new generation. Uh, actually, this was promised from the beginning. That's right. Yep. And I know the introduction uh, in the NIV uh, to the Romans uh, says this, which was really helpful. God's plan for the world has been revealed through a descendant of King David, Jesus the Messiah. And this message demonstrates that God has been faithful to his covenant with Israel, but that God has also come to rescue both Jews and Gentiles through the death and resurrection of Jesus. A new worldwide family is being created. Now, for some, that would have been hard to take, uh, the Jews, because they thought of themselves as as the people, you know, and well, we'll adopt these in. But he says, no, in fact, we're all adopted, everyone <laughs> into this new kingdom, uh, this new worldwide family is being created. Um, and then one of the things that you're gonna notice this week is that Paul's letter, his message is steeped in scripture. Again, teachings that the Jews would have been very, very familiar with. Uh, teaching about the Gentiles, he says, and being part of the kingdom, it's not a new thing. It was written in 2 Samuel. David wrote, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles. And of course, uh, that's translated Gentiles from nations. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the song of David after he delivered, after he, he had been delivered from the hands of his enemies, even as early as Deuteronomy. 
uh, chapter 32, you'll hear him quote from Deuteronomy, Rejoice you Gentiles with his people. And those words are part of the song of Moses. It's such an important passage of scripture before he died and the leadership was handed over to Joshua. So it's not a new concept. This has been from the beginning that the Gentiles were purposed to be part of this. And he also quotes from various Psalms as well. And of course, one of the books of the Bible, which is so important to the Jews, Isaiah 11. Uh, so, yeah. Absolutely. The root of Jesse will spring up. One who will arise to rule over Israel? No. His people? No. Rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will. So he says, I, God has chosen me. Uh, to be a special messenger of hope, not only to the Jews, but especially uh, to the Gentiles, which I found fascinating because, of course, uh, Paul calls himself a Pharisee of Pharisees. And he exactly. I am, you know. Yeah. Yet his eyes have been opened. Clearly. And, uh, he has seen this great need uh, to make sure that uh, all nations will know that they have been, uh, they are part of God's plan of redemption and have been since the very uh, beginning. Yeah, I love that look back. We were looking uh, at, at that Isaiah passage this morning uh, in mm -hmm. worship. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's it's remarkable, really, when you think about it. And I love it that it's Paul yes. just giving this message, you know. it's uh, It really is the work of meeting Jesus and and understanding all that came before as as he reveals it to him and yeah and and what's wondering. special about the book of romans too is uh he'd not been to rome mm. and here he was uh, and and he knew some people who were there he'd met them personally uh but uh in this section that uh, these these last few chapters uh, and the readings don't cover chapter 16 but i encourage you read them because they're important uh, to, to finish this off but you know he talks about his plans to visit Rome after his trip to Jerusalem he's been given some gifts and he has to take them back to Jerusalem but he says after I finish that task uh, I'm going to visit you on my way to Spain and uh, and then he goes on to ask them to pray for him uh, he, Paul always assures them of his prayers, but he also asked them to pray for him because uh, he knew this trip to Jerusalem was not going to be easy. Mm. And as Paul always does in, in his letter, he encourages them too. And he, he finishes off chapter 15 by saying, the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Amen. So he was a great encourager, a great teacher, a great encourager of them. And I, you can tell by his words that he so looks forward just to physically being there uh, with them uh, as well. So that summary of his message, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, as you read through the letter to the Romans and his wonderful in chapter 16, just personal messages to individual people. Um, you look at that and you think, you know, they're going to need this. They are really going to need this encouragement. Yes. And they're need, going to need to have that great sense of unity that only the spirit of God can bring. Uh, they're going to need that encouragement considering what was to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and in all of this, just as you read it through, just be mindful that Paul finally did make it to Rome. After a shipwreck. And, <laughs> and, and as a prisoner. And because he appealed to Caesar, it was his way of getting uh, there. And as we know, when he was in Rome, he was yep. under house arrest for a while, but then under... Nero, things changed. They changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so many Christians were persecuted under Nero, 54 to 68 uh, AD. And of course, we know that in that period of time between 67 and 68, uh, Paul himself 
and was martyred uh, as well. Mm. Uh, so, and, and even after that, believers continued to be greatly persecuted. So many were killed uh, mm. under Constantine. Uh, and, and well, under the those who, who followed Nero, and then it was in Constantine times. It wasn't until about 328 to 337 uh, that Constantine the Great became the sole ruler. So that's a lot of time, you know, that, that's, that's a, you know, 80 years, something that they let, well, more than that, there's three. Yeah. Three. I, I was a math teacher. That <laughs> was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 50 years yeah. until, until Constantine the Great became the sole ruler and his conversion to Christianity uh, then made Christianity a legal religion mm. and uh, persecution ceased. And then, of course, the Church of Rome grew and spread and went all over the all over where the Roman Empire went. Yeah, um, critical. Absolutely critical. Influence. Absolutely critical. And so this letter has all that richness mm -hmm. of uh, the history and of the place uh, that uh, Paul was to go to eventually and be in and be, be able to visit with some of these people uh, who had read his letter and uh, that he meant so much to. Uh, so as you read it through, think about uh, eventually what happened, but that that special mes message uh, that he has for them of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, and also that message that Gentiles had their equal place in the kingdom of God uh, from the beginning of time. So it's a good week, good way to finish off. Uh, yeah, Rome's and like I said, don't stop at the end of it. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Mm. Let me offer a little benediction right out of uh, 1513 that, that flows with what you've been saying, Janet. Absolutely. Please. Uh, please. May do. the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Good Wonderful. words for the week. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you again, Gail. Thank you. It thank you. Good. I appreciate it. And uh, everyone, um, if you're not already reading the um, the Encounter with God, which I have a copy of here in print, you can get it quarterly in your mailbox or you can get it on our website right online or delivered to your email. So we hope if you're not already part of our community of readers that you will indeed join us. We do have Bible Guide Extras that you can also find on our website. I know Janet always likes me to mention those. Yes, uh, which I do. I'm along. getting ready to read the ones for the third quarter. So I get Oh, them. yeah. <laughs> you can use them in small group study or for your own, uh, your own thinking and meditation as well. Absolutely. Janet, it's always good to have you on this uh, episode, on this podcast, and uh, wish you a good week ahead as well. All right. And to all our listeners. Yes. Bye for now. Bye.